Uh, you'll notice that you may have noticed that precautions changed. So at the beginning, we were thinking if this is really airborne, till we know, we're going to use these. Uh, and that's because we, when we don't know, we go with this LADGIAT, which stands for it. it seemed like a good idea at the time. But now we know more. So we know it's droplet. So therefore, the precautions are exactly what we do for flu. And we know what we're doing for flu. We've done it before. So it's exactly the same. Okay. The bugs, not flu, it's, but it is a respiratory virus that behaves in exactly the same way as flu. So when people say it's just flu, it's not just flu, but what we do is the same for flu. So therefore, surgical masks are absolutely fine uh, for the vast majority of procedures because they will, they will effectively pick out large respiratory droplets. And for that, they are as effective as these respirator masks. Okay. And there is good scientific studies, and there was a review published by Oxford just this morning that looked at all of the evidence and found no evidence that these are any better at large droplets. Okay. It's only the small particles from an aerosol generating procedure. Uh, so we still need to, to use those for, uh, for that, and we need to protect the stuff. You know, and it's not about us saying we haven't got enough of these, we mustn't use them. You know, it's a waste. And I was uh, on a call with a colleague in Slovenia uh, yesterday evening who they don't have enough of these. So I put her in touch with another chum of mine in Nebraska where they are reusing these. And he's written a procedure to do it with ultraviolet light and that's the best they can do. And we're not at that stage, okay? But that's what they're having to do. So uh, summary precautions then for PPE. If you have close patient contact within two meters, nursing staff, this is apron, surgical mask and gloves. No need for a long sleeve disposable gown, no need for the respirator. Think about the need for eye protection if the patient's coughing a lot. Okay? If you just go into a room but no contact with the patient in the environment, it's a surgical mask. And that is not to stop you inhaling something, it's to stop you doing that. Okay? That's what that's for. Uh, if you're just cleaning the room with air, like hotel services, apron, surgical mask and gloves. For aerosol generating procedures, it's the long sleeve gown, the FFP3, respirator, eye protection, and gloves. So just remind us about standard precautions because you know, other infections are still go around and we need to protect ourselves and others. You wear gloves if you've got direct contact with blood and body fluids, so you risk assess the procedure. People think gloves are the cure-all for everything and we do hugely overuse them. So if you need gloves, you put them on immediately before that particular procedure and then you take them off and you decontaminate your hands. If you just put a pair of gloves on and keep doing lots of tasks, all you're going to do is move stuff around because people, when they've got gloves on, never decontaminate their hands. And gloves do pick up things and they do deposit them. So you'll be transferring stuff around. The alcohol hand rub is fantastic <coughs> at killing these viruses and virtually everything else apart from things like C. diff and, and norovirus. The aprons, again, when you think about how, how am I contacting things, am I likely to become contaminated, let's put the apron on. So standing in the room talking to somebody, you don't need to put an apron on. You're not going to come into contact with anything. Okay, so risk assess the procedure. If indicated, put on immediately before the procedure. Take it off afterwards uh, or when you're leaving the patient and decontaminate hands. For patients with COVID, we're doing respiratory precautions because the droplets are the, are the transmission record. Therefore, patients will be in a single room or in a bay with other patients, and we wear protective clothing for close contact, two meters. Okay, protective clothing for direct contact with body fluids, but we should be doing that anyway. Clean surfaces daily. In fact, we should up the cleaning frequency of the frequently touched surfaces. And if, you know, have a look around your ward or department and think, what are people touching a lot? And often you see things like light switches as a frequently touched surface. Really, it's not because it's once or twice a day, you know, then you're not constantly touching that. But there are pieces of kit that I may not know about. And you maybe haven't thought about that people do touch a lot and they need to be cleaned a lot more regularly. And, and that's with the detergent with, uh, followed by a disinfectant or a combination product. Uh, and then for patients, we will use uh, in, in these areas, we'll use dedicated equipment. OK, in some areas of the hospital, we'll be doing more aerosol generating procedures. We're talking about ICU. In which case, because uh, they're dealing with suction and intubation, therefore staff will wear FFP3 masks with or without eye protection all the time. If they're with the patient, they don't need it if they're just walking up and down the corridor, but when they're with the patient, waterproof long sleeve gowns and gloves, which have to be changed, and people have to remember this. You know, if you're working with somebody's catheter and then you go and deal with a vent, you don't want to transfer the bugs from their catheter to their vent because then you give them a different infection. So uh, that's not good either. These FFP3 masks are good for the aerosol generating procedures, and I think the list is up next. 
They filter out very small particles and they protect you from inhalation of very fine airborne particles, which is if they were sneezing, then you would have to be wearing these, but you don't get sneezing with this, okay? The filtration, however, is only effective if it seals to the contour of the face. It's really important. So therefore, you have to be fit tested for these, okay? But if you're doing an aerosol generating procedure, you need to wear it. For other close contact, you don't. And these are aerosol generating procedures, intubation, extubation, related procedures, tracheostomy, manual ventilation, open suctioning, bronchoscopy. Now we are actually also considering gastroscopy as an aerosol generating procedure, because I know if you put a scope down my throat, I'm gonna cough. Okay, so I would class that as an aerosol generating procedure as well. Non-invasive ventilation, either BiPAP or CPAP. Surgery and post-mortem procedures if you're using high-speed devices, drills, that sort of thing. High-frequency oscillating ventilation, high-flow nasal oxygen, induced sputum, some dental procedures if there's drilling going on. And we're also thinking uh, if you've got patients who are coughing a lot and you're turning them and you're in very close contact, it's possibly worth wearing that at that point because uh, you know, they'll get a big cough. For a known or suspected person, just routine contact, surgical mask is fine, close contact, two meters, blue side out. If you see people wearing their white side out, they got it around the wrong way. Very important, okay? Because that's the blue side is the water repellent layer. Eye protection for risk of splash, gloves for close contact, etc. Change in between procedures, apron for close contact. You only need the fluid disposable gown for aerosol generating procedures.